Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful to see this group out here in this fine, fine facility, and it's just a huge crowd that we have today. So thank you very much for coming out to see us. We have a special kind of group. Testing one, two. Okay, there it is. We are checking a final, fine grouping of taking every instrument that wants to qualify and play with us. So we're not following the old 1940s standard uh, seating and standard instrumentation. And so we have a, a great opportunity to let everyone in, in our group that is able and wants to play being in this jazz band. And it's really nice. You can see we've got quite a large group of people as well. So yeah, so we are doing something a little bit different for us this year, and we really are fortunate and like that. So that was a great tune by, of course, uh, Frank Sinatra, Come Fly With Me. Next, we'd like to do a tune from West Side Story, and that is the special tune that is one of my favorites of it. It's called Cool. and Tom Lowland on trumpet.
Bowl goal, Linda Snyder. Saxophone Amy Hayes and Marianne Hunt.
remember, I remember all that you said. You told me love was so publicly and only you were through with me. And now you say you love me. Well, just to prove. Well, just to prove it's true, come on and cry me a river, cry me a river, I cried a river over you. Now we have a special number that I know you all recognize. And if you'd like to do those motions, it's perfectly fine. So just a little hint, it would be that starts off, you know. Something like that. We're gonna feature a couple of songs in this one that i like to uh, speak to just a minute about this. And so, um, this I had my, one of my buddies here on uh, saxophone, he played baritone saxophone, he decided to enlarge that thing. <laughs> so stand up, Gordon, if you will. This is a bass saxophone and he happened to go to England and I think he just uh, fell in love with the thing and he bought it and so he's gonna be playing a little solo for us today on the bass saxophone. How many of you have heard of bass saxophone before? Really? <laughs> I was surprised, I thought that would be a zero. So yeah, and on this side, from the big to the small, on this side we have Mike and he's gonna be play the, playing the melodica. And the melodica is uh, sort of like a keyboard, but you add some wind to it and it had some reeds to make vibration sounds in it. You're gonna get to hear that too. And we're gonna feature him first over here and him second over there on that. So very good guys, here we go. And of course you know the title. You know the title. YMCA. <laughs>
Sapon and Michael Bryan on Melodica. That concludes our last number. We thank you very much for being here today. And whoa, the motions were really great out there. Thank you so much.
We heard from vocalist, or actually our soloist, David Vukin on piano. <laughs> Mr. Jerry Fagan on the tenor sax. And Sharon Sakola on clarinet. And that piece was called Things Ain't What They Used To Be, and that's from the Woody Herman Library. And everything that you're going to be hearing this evening with uh, the jazz ensemble are exactly as recorded. These are all the original arrangements. So you're, you just got to hear some Woody Herman. We're actually gonna, this next tune that we're gonna do for you is actually from a film score. And it's such a nice, a nice tune. I happen to be, uh, watching television one afternoon and they had this movie called In Like Flint and I hadn't seen this thing in years, it was James Colbert and I started watching it and it had a jazz waltz in the, the front titles and this thing just went on and was carried from one section of the band to the other and I just, I fell in love with it. It's like, I want to do this. So we'd like to perform that for you now and it's from uh, the year, believe it or not, is 1967. And here it is, in like Flint, you're going to hear David Weiss on trumpet. do a little bit of Glenn Miller for you. 
right away in your mind you're thinking Glenn Miller Orchestra and the lead clarinet, Moonlight Serenade, in the mood. We're not doing those. <laughs> this is a tune, believe it or not, there's only two groups that have this tune. This was never recorded. It was just about two years ago discovered in the library. And uh, the current Glenn Miller Orchestra has it. And we have it at New Horizons. The only two groups. This is going to be a first tonight. This is kind of a premiere for this. Um, Bill Finnegan was the arranger. Bill was, Bill was a genius. Uh, the arrangements he wrote, he wrote for a lot of the big bands. He also wrote for Tommy Dorsey, um, Harry James, and Benny Goodman, Woody Herman. And he wrote for Glenn Miller. He's the guy that, that did Little Brown Jug. And you'll probably hear in this next tune a little bit of that. But what he did was he took a, a uh, Haydn tune from the Surprise Symphony. And he made an arrangement of it. And it's called Surprising Papa Haydn. And it doesn't sound like Glenn Miller, but I think you'll hear little Miller-isms in there. But this is a great tune. I think you'll enjoy it.
and Dave Lucan on piano. But we want to do a, a, a Harry James tune. We're going to be featuring our trumpets. You'll get to hear the strings. You're going to get to, you'll get to hear Jerry Fagan again on tenor saxophone. And Harry would use this tune as, as his theme for a while. And later on, there was a famous DJ. His name was Chuck Cecil. And he had a, 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 a big band program out of Los Angeles called The Swinging Years. And he used this as his theme. Now, when I tell you the title of this, and if you look in your program, you're saying, what the heck is that? Well, when they passed the arrangement out at rehearsal, there was no title on it. And the Barry Sax player didn't like his part because he played the same thing over and over. And you'll hear the same thing here this afternoon. And he goes, this thing sounds like it's a comic book. It's the funnies. Matter of fact, it sounds like one of Dick Tracy's villains. And so they decided to call it, after one of Dick Tracy's villains, the mole. performance because we get to do it many many times so I get my I get my film my fix so to speak this next one you're gonna love it's Henry Mancini and you can't get any better than that 
And everybody knows this from watching the cartoons, but there was a series of movies that came out about the Pink Panther. And the Pink Panther is a diamond. So we're going to do a little, a little uh, Mancini for you in the Pink Panther. You'll hear the strings. And you're going to hear Jerry Fagan again. Let's give it up for Jerry Fagan. Man. The man of the hour. No pressure. music just for fun and we decided let's try I had some James Bond arrangements this is Sean Connery years in my opinion Sean Connery is James Bond <laughs> and uh, we, we passed them out and they had a blast with them they really enjoyed playing these arrangements so I thought what the heck let's go ahead and do it on a concert of course we're here this evening and I thought let's take things a step further and with this beautiful facility, and we have a movie screen. So, you know, why don't we show the movie? You've got time, don't you? Be here for a couple hours, right? Anyway, I, what I like to do with groups, and, and even myself, I like, I like to have them have the experience of what it's like to be in a recording orchestra and playing a movie soundtrack. And of course, I told you, everything you hear is the original arrangements. And these are the original Bond arrangements. The string parts are the real thing. That's what they're going to be playing for you. And on Henry Mancini, that was, that was the symphony parts. They played them. Didn't they do a great job? So we're going to recreate the opening of the movie Goldfinger. I have some notes about it. You know, you know, you come here, and of course we're at the University of Dayton, 
and uh, go to university, or even New Horizons, you expect to be educated. So I'm going to educate you a little bit. Goldfinger, the movie came out in 1964, and it was the composer is John Barry. As a matter of fact, he did, did all of the Bond films of, from uh, Sean Connery. And we'll be playing a couple other ones of those for you as well. And when John Barry wrote this music, he was very young and at that time. He was a young composer living in an apartment, which they called Flats in England, London, England. And his best friend, you would believe this, is Michael Caine. And Michael Caine is a struggling young actor at that time, just getting, starting to get into movies. And he came into London to, to film, and they didn't have a place for him to stay. So John said, why don't you come over to my house and stay with me? And so he did. Well, what he didn't realize was John was busy composing. And 2, 2 a.m. in the morning, he's on the piano, and you know what he's composing? Goldfinger. And Michael Caine tells a story of how he was the first person to hear Goldfinger, and he told him, that's a winner. That's going to be great. Now, in the original movie score, it was sung by Shirley Bassey. We're very, very fortunate tonight. We're going to invite Donna Stevens to come on stage. Donna. On which side she's on. We're going to get Donna out here. There she is, Donna Stevens, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Donna doesn't sing exactly right away. And you're going to notice we're going to project the film. And I, I have to be like a film composer when we're recording. I have to look for my cues to make sure everything matches up. And that's what we're going to attempt to do with you this evening. So here is Goldfinger and just a few.
1965, they came out with the, another Bond film, and this movie was basically done underwater. It was called Thunderball. And uh, these movies became extremely popular, and a lot of it's because of the gadgets. Now, in Goldfinger, we have what was called the world's greatest car, the Aston Martin DB5. So, and if you, and they're starting to make the Aston Martin DB5. You can get the Goldfinger James Bond edition. It's one million dollars. <laughs> you need your gold for that. And they had a jetpack in the uh, in, in Thunderball, and they started using it in other shows. Matter of fact, you saw it in Lost in Space, believe it or not. But what we'd like to re uh, do for you now is is. Uh, kind of simulate what it's like to be in a recording studio. And believe it or not, the, uh, the sound stages, the recording studios at MGM, Universal, or Warner Brothers looks like this auditorium. It really does. There's, a there's wood just like this. They have a big screen, and the conductor looks at the screen, and where you're sitting is a gigantic control panel that goes the entire length of the auditorium. And then behind that, they have couches, they have a ping pong table, in case they get bored and they need to take a break. So we want to recreate what it would be like to record a scene. We're going to use the movie Thunderball, and this uh, scene is called The Death of Fiona. And she's a villainess, and she's nasty. So we'll see what James Bond does in this scene. The year is 1967, and we have the next Bond movie, which takes place in Japan. 
and uh, has a wonderful opening to the movie where James Bond is actually murdered. But later on, we find out he wasn't. It was all fake. But for the recording of this, uh, this tune, they didn't use Shirley Bassey. Um, at that time period, Frank Sinatra was very, very popular. And his daughter, he was promoting his daughter who had Nancy Sinatra, who had a great hit song, These Boots Are Made For Walking. So he decided he wanted Nancy to do a Bond film. So he called the producer and says, my daughter's going to be your singer. I don't think there was a lot of discussion about it. So Nancy went over and Nancy was extremely nervous. I mean, she was nervous. This is the first time she had done a movie score. Dad just threw her into this. And so they went into the studio and recorded You Only Live Twice. And it was not a good day. And how, how, many, how many takes did it take? 83 takes. She had to sing it 83 times. And what they ended up doing is they, they pieced the whole thing together. That's what they had to do. One of the recording techniques, they can do that. It's even easier today what they can do. So we're going to invite Donna Stevens back to sing it for you. You only live twice. One take.
We'd like to feature Sharon Sicola on the tenor, or the alto saxophone on this next one. And uh, there's sometimes when a movie will have a tune and they'll rearrange it and use it again in a film. In this next one, we uh, did the recording session with Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, is what it was originally called, called The Death of Fiona. But then they re-recorded it and made a really nice alto saxophone solo out of it. And uh, we hope that you enjoy this version of Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I have to ask you a question. Are you having a good time? Yeah. All right. Dan and Strange, are you having a good time? Yeah. The strings really want to jump up and down. Matter of fact, you didn't get to see this, but during YMCA, they were actually in the back doing the YMCA. <laughs> I saw you. Well, this next film, Sean Connery, this is actually one of Sean Connery's last films that he did as James Bond. And it took place out in Las Vegas, perfect. And the tune is uh, Diamonds Are Forever. What a, what a great movie. So we're gonna bring Donna back out to sing it for you.
Senator Stevens, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much. Well, you have been such a super audience this afternoon. Give yourselves a round of applause. And I, I, I do have to tell you, it is such a treat to be here in this yeah, brand new auditorium. The, uh, the Glass Auditorium here at the University of Dayton. And it's really is. It's, and being able to do all this, the strings, the band, it's a dream come true, it really is. And I want to thank our founder, Dr. Linda Hartley, ladies and gentlemen. If it wasn't for Linda, this wouldn't be happening. So again, we're so glad that you took time out of your afternoon and you're putting up with the Bond music and all the, all the things we did. And let's give another round of applause for Jazz Band too. They did such a great job today. Really. Well, this is the one you've been waiting for. And I have to introduce you our guitar player, Mark Ashby, ladies and gentlemen. Mark, stand up so they can see you. This is the sound of James Bond. This is what you remember. Now, everybody thinks that John Barry wrote this theme. He did. Monty Norman wrote, wrote it for Dr. No, the first movie. And uh, Monty Norman had his own band. Of course, the producers, they were just getting started at this time. So they, they heard this band and go, oh, let's give this guy a try. And he was pretty popular in England, so they had him write it. And then they brought in uh, John Barry's band to play some of the music and record it. And then John started writing for the the different films and it all just how it, how it all turned out. But we hope and again thank you for being here. Here's the James Bond theme.